Welcome to the June 5th, 2024 uh, Council of Government meeting. If you could please stand for the pledge. Next, we have the consent agenda. We have multiple items on the consent agenda. Are there any board members that wishes to pull a consent agenda item? Okay, seeing none, is there any public members? Seeing none in the room, are there any online? No. Okay, with that, is there a motion to approve the consent? Move. Moved by Tim, is there a second? Second. Second by Pat, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, uh, any nays? Seven, zero. None. Okay. We'll move on to the regular agenda. Uh, first up is public comment. Five minutes per person. Comment shall be limited to items that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council and cannot, and not on the posted agenda. Are there any public comment? Seeing none in the room. Um, are there any online? No. No. Okay. Move on to item number eight. Caltrans report. Hello, Goya. Uh, Chair, members of the board, I'm Gregoria Ponce. I'm the acting planning deputy for Caltrans District 10, and it's an honor to uh, serve and be here and share with you. I do have a few items. Um, I'll start off with the, the larger items. Uh, Caltrans in expanding its multimodal. We've augmented our passenger rail fleet with new ADA passenger cars. Malin, as you may or may not know, was National Train Day, big day for us. And uh, we successfully augmented our passenger rail service in California by placing into service the first of seven new ADA accessible venture passenger rail car train sets for daily round trip travel. Um, we plan to add more as this moves forward, and we're certainly excited to see this transition. We do have some funding opportunities, Federal Highway Administration, Active Transportation Infrastructure Investment Program. FHWA has released its call for applications intended to help improve safety, efficiency, reliability of active transportation networks and communities. <clears throat> The funding would go to allow communities to identify, prioritize, and implement improvements um, to the largest barriers to safe, accessible, and equitable pedestrian and bicycle network connectivity through development of infrastructure to provide substantial additional opportunities for walking and biking. Um, if the, excuse me, if Cobb would like to ha have a letter of support, um, signed by a Caltrans district uh, director. I'm certainly open to uh, assisting in that by coordinating with our strategic investment manager, Sylvia Dyack. Um, there's approximately 44.5 million available, um, and it's eligible to um, RTPAs, uh, special districts, multi-state groups of government. EPA has an environmental and climate justice community change grant call for applications. It's intended to help uh, community-driven projects that address climate challenges and reduce pollution. There's approximately $2 billion available, and the deadline's November 21st, and eligibility is to local governments, tribal governments, nonprofit organizations, and community-based organizations. Um, the Strength and Mobility and Revolution, excuse me, Revolutionary Transportation, the SMART program uh, for Stage 1 has issued its call for applications. Uh, intended to conduct demonstration projects focused on advanced smart city uh, community technology and systems to improve transportation efficiency and safety. There's approximately, okay. There's approximately 50 million available with the deadline of July 12th, and I'm happy to provide this information um, um, to whomever you, to you, to the excellent to. <laughs> Um, Executive Director would be happy to share that. Um, lastly, the Local Highway Safety Improvement Program, Cycle 12, call for applications. We have approximately $300 million available. The deadline is September 9th, and this is under the Highway Safety Improvement Program, um, and it's intended to achieve high reduction in fatalities and serious injuries on all public roads 
Uh, funds are eligible for work on any public road or publicly owned bike or ped pathway or trail or on tribal lands for general use of tribal members that improves safety for its users. Our Division of Local Assistance is managing this program. Um, this information is also listed on www.grants.ca.gov or you um, certainly can contact me uh, to provide additional information. At this time, I have no other information to share if anyone has any questions for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we've got city and county reports. So we'll start with the um, county and then we'll go to city. Robert? Good afternoon. Construction continues on the Wagon Trail project. Pavement has been placed on the western portion that was remaining. There's still some pavement that needs to be added to that western portion, but the section between where they left off where the winter and Bonanza My Way is, uh, is I don't want to say complete yet because there's still more work done, but there's pavement on that section. That's an area where the road had to be raised a little bit to avoid some cultural artifacts. The board also approved the change order for proceeding with construction of the wall. Work in the area where the wall construction is supposed to happen has already started. Uh, the version of the creek is has started, so next steps, we're going to start building that wall. So uh, all of that is good news. We the, the plan now still is to have the completion of the project by the end of the year. Um, the county and Caltrans continue to discuss various uh, issues, such as the connection with Cherokee Creek Bridge, funding issues, and so forth. So that's, that's still ongoing, daily work. Um, the Valley Spring Safety Improvement uh, project, we received the request for authorization to proceed on that one. And so that project is now being advertised so that it could be built this year. That project uses CMAC funding that, that we obtained. So that should be spent in time. Okay. okay. Um, we had a pretty good call today with Caltrans and one of the projects that I mentioned to them that they needed to pay attention to is, is that all of Orchard Garner Lane Highway 26 project. We told them that we intend to submit a grant application for that. That's the HS, HSIP grant that was just uh, discussed. But it's on their list. Um, a solution for that, they're still kind of working out a solution for that intersection. So we hope to really get moving on that. Um, let's see, as far as projects, any question? And one more thing. I'm not the director of public works anymore. I'm now a deputy director of public works. Craig Pedro is going to be coming in as interim director of public works. This is happening as I am getting close to hanging up the gloves, maybe in a year or so. I'm still the uh, county surveyor, and I'm doing everything else, but it's a good time to transition. It'll, we'll, we'll take it easy. It won't be a sudden thing. We have time. Are there any questions? Ben. Yes, sir. Uh, so we're setting out RFP for the safety thing in Valley Springs and all that. Yeah. The, the you were in here. I came in before I was even a supervisor and was questioning about that. And so that's a big project, and I really appreciate that moving forward. Also, uh, good news on the olive orchard thing. It's like I said before, it's been a priority for the county since 2002. It got skipped over for various reasons we don't need to get into. But uh, I appreciate that you uh, have pushed that forward and are moving forward on that one, Robert. It's important to me. Yes, sir. Another person just got a couple of weeks ago hit, hit on a motorcycle right there. And um, it's consistent down there on safety issues, even if they don't all get reported. We have a consultant on board right now who's going to help us with that grant application. Hopefully, that we have success. That's what the aim is. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other board questions? Okay. Thank you, Robert. 
um, City Isabel? Um, yeah, so for the city, we just have two updates. The road, <clears throat> excuse me, side safety, the roadside safety sign project is awaiting delivery of signs, and apparently there's a supply chain issue. And um, the constructor or the construction is slated to begin installation at the end of the month in early July is when it should be completed. And then we broke ground for the Utica Park project yesterday with construction starting today. Um, so we're really excited about that. And just reminding everyone that if you want to see Mark Twain while he's being rehabilitated or um, he's at the museum. So just reminding you all of that. There any questions for Isabel? Okay, we'll move on to item number 10, which is the presentation and acceptance of the performance audit of the COG and CTA for fiscal years 2020-21 to 22-23. Um, I'll turn it over to the executive director. Thank you. This item is actually Erin's. Um, she's been the project manager, so she deserves the credit. Um, she has consultants here, so I'll hand it over to Erin. Hi, board. Um, as you are likely aware, COG is responsible for administering the TDA for the region, which provides the LTF and STA for transit, bike ped, and streets and roads. Uh, the TDA requires COG to hire an outside consultant to conduct a performance audit of both COG and the transit agency every three years, um, evaluating the efficiency and effectiveness of processes and procedures. Um, the COG board awarded a contract in October of 23 to LSC Transportation. And so with that, I'd like to welcome Acadia Davis and Will Garner who, on who are online and they have a brief presentation on our completed triennial performance audits. And Acadia, you should be able to share your screen at this point. Great, thank you so much, Erin. Go ahead and see what I can do here. Are you able to see that? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so as Aaron said, so my name is Acadia Davis and my colleague Will Garner and I are here from LSC Transportation Consultants to present the triennial performance audits for Calgary's Council of Governments. And this triennial performance audit covers the three year period between 2020, 2021, and then 22, 23. Okay, so the triennial performance audits, or TPAs as I'll refer to them, are required to be conducted every three years by the Transportation Development Act, or TDA. And TPAs, they provide an opportunity for an objective performance evaluation of the Regional Transportation Planning Agency, or RTPA, which here is the Calaveras Council of Governments, and the Transit Operator, which is Calaveras Transit Agency. And TPAs, they make recommendations for improvements that hopefully will increase efficiency, ensure good use of taxpayer funds, and if needed, bring the RTPA and transit operator into compliance with TDA regulations. So the TPA process starts with the auditor looking to see if the RTPA and transit operator are meeting compliance requirements set by the TDA. And we also review prior audit recommendations and whether and how those have been addressed. The auditor then conducts a quantitative performance evaluation that calculates a variety of performance metrics for the transit operator. And looking at metrics such as operating costs per hour, it really paints a picture of how efficient, productive, and effective the service is currently. The auditor then conducts a functional review of how the agency is performing by meeting with CCOG, CTA, and operator staff, which we did in early 2024. For CCOG, this includes what strategic transportation planning happened during the audit period and how does the TDA claims process work. For CTA, this is how does ride scheduling work and how are fares collected. All of this goes into a draft report that is presented to the board, what we're doing here today. And any final comments are incorporated and then a final report is prepared. And two separate TPAs are conducted and prepared, one for CCOG and one for CTA. And I will go through the findings and recommendations for each of those here. So we'll start with CCOG. We found that CCOG was in compliance with all TDA performance requirements. 
and that all prior audit recommendations remain in progress. Um, CCOG successfully allocated regional transportation funding and really excels as an RTPA in securing grant funding. Um, and we found that CCOG has a good working relationship with CTA. Overall, honestly, we found CCOG to be an exemplary RTPA representing a small rural county. This, this TPA has three recommendations for CCOG, and all of these recommendations have been carried forward to some degree from the prior TPA. The first recommendation is to conduct goal setting exercises for CCOG and CTA involving the board to update strategic planning direction set in 2014. And due to significant changes in transit oversight and management since 2014, we recommend revisiting and updating the goals and policy direction for CCOG. The second recommendation is to document separation of staff roles in TDA administration for claiming funds for the CTA and approving the claim. In our interview with CCOG staff, we were able to confirm that there is appropriate separation of staff roles, but it's our recommendation to document this separation in writing, most likely in the policy and procedures manual. The third recommendation and last one is to update the CCOG TDA claims checklist. And the current checklist reflects outdated TDA guidance and regulations on submission deadlines for state controller reports. We just recommend updating the checklist to reflect those changes. So to move on to Calaveras Transit Agency. So we found that uh, prior recommendations are either complete or in progress. Two of the prior recommendations are complete. And the one that remains in progress is to include deadhead hours in the monthly summary report. And I'll discuss this more when we cover the TPA recommendations. There were significant service and fare changes during the audit period, as many of you are pro probably aware. Some of these early on in the audit period were due to COVID restrictions and reactions to that. But on top of that, changes included CTA implementing a public dial ride service, direct connect, extension of the red line fixed route to serve Arnold, implementation of the Columbia College shuttle, and fare changes. We found that ridership increased 78.1% during the audit period, which is a really notable achievement given that many peer agencies have not seen a similar jump in ridership in the last three years. We found that CTA is in compliance with TDA requirements with two exceptions, one being on time submittal of the state control report for 2021 and 22-23, and then how CTA defines full-time equivalent employees. And for the first one, the state control report reports were submitted literally a day and three days late for both the stated years. So I'm confident that CTA can fix this and get these in on time in the future. And the second area, it's a common area where transit agencies are not in compliance when we do TPAs. Um, and I'll talk more about this when we discuss recommendations. So to give you just a few highlights of where CTA is system-wide in regards to performance, and these are just some snapshots. Um, there's more detail in the full TPA report. When we look at efficiency or operating cost per hour, we can see that there was very minimal increase during the audit period. When we look at productivity or passengers per hour, we can see that System-wide, and this includes both fixed route and dial-a-ride, productivity increased from 1.4 passengers to a little over 1.9 passengers per hour. And lastly, to show you how Fairbox recovery ratio changed over the audit period. Um, so Fairbox recovery ratio is the ratio of operating costs that are paid for by fair revenue. And it's historically been a closely monitored metric of how a transit system is performing. Um, and CTA as a rural area has been required to meet a minimum fare box ratio of 10%. This is just a standard number set for rural areas by TDA. So for fiscal year 2021, we can see that this was below 10% at about 7%. But 
Operators who did not meet the 10% ratio in 2021 were not penalized. So there are no repercussions for this being at 7%. Then beginning in 21-22, California passed AB 149, which made it allowable to include federal grant funding as local funds when calculating fare box ratio. And I say this because it explains this massive jump in fare box ratio for the second and third years. And AB 149, with this passage, makes it way easier for a transit agency to meet the minimum ratio requirement. And so for the time being, at least, fare box ratio is no longer the end all for evaluating a public transit system. We recommend that other metrics such as ridership and operating cost per hour or mile should be considered. We have six recommendations for CTA in the TPA. The first recommendation is to include deadhead hours and miles in the monthly summary report. Um, this in part comes from a prior audit recommendation. And this action will provide a more complete overall picture of route efficiency for staff to look at and say the board and can be used in future service planning. Recommendation two is to develop a standardized process to reconcile fares and boarding totals. And here CTA would work with the transit contractor to develop a standardized process to track fare cash totals collected from fare boxes along with boarding counts. And this provides the ability to reconcile fares collected versus expected totals to ensure accuracy of the fare collection and fare reporting process. Recommendation three is to provide separate fixed route and dial ride operating and financial statistics. And this is specifically in summary reports and financial, financial transaction reports. And having separate statistics would provide a accurate picture of the cost efficiency and productivity of each individual type of service, as opposed to just looking at it system wide. Recommendation four is to calculate and report employee hours, full-time equivalency to the state controller in accordance with the definition in Appendix B of the Performance Audit Guidebook. And like I said, this is a pretty common area where transit agencies are not in compliance with TDA regulations. And what this comes down to is CTA calculating full-time equivalent employees using 2,000 hours per year to define full-time and not using 2,080. Uh, actually, Katie, I think that's backwards. We use 2,080 and we should be using 2,000, correct? Yes. Did I say that wrong? Yes. Yeah. We, sh we should be using 2,000 hours instead of using 2,080. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. So recommendation five is to update the Calaveras Connect website to reflect current direct connect reservation options and rider policies. And this is just as simple as updating the website to reflect the fact that passengers cannot reserve direct connect rides via the spare app and must reserve rides via the phone. Lastly, recommendation six is included more as a future reminder than anything CTA is doing incorrectly. And as I discuss a little bit around the fare box recovery ratio, we recommend that if the ratio falls below that 10% TDA requirement, just to remember to consider allowances made by AB 149. Um, whereas this used to not be true, now federal grants can be included as local funds for the purpose of fare box calculation. So with that, I would encourage everyone to look at the full reports for more details, more figures, more information. Um, but I wanted to stop there and open it up for any questions or comments that anyone has for us. Anyone have any questions for us? Justin? Yeah, is um, AB 149, is that going on indefinitely? That's a good question. So some parts of it are, um, some parts aren't. So in regards to federal funds being counted as local funds for the purpose of fare box ratio calculation, yes, there's no end date on that under AB 149. Any other questions? Okay, there's no other questions. You can go forward. Okay, 
If there's no other questions from the board um, or public, of which there isn't any, um, I think that concludes the presentation. Um, as she said, we'll include any comments or questions received. You guys are welcome to email me if you think of something between now and I don't know, the next couple of weeks, and we'll bring back the finals for um, acceptance. Okay. Thank you for Thank the you. presentation. Overall, it looks like a good report. Mm -hmm. Good job, you all. Thanks, Katie. Thank you for listening. Um, just because I know Monica is going to take her finger at me, is there any public comment? Okay, not seen any in the room and then online, right? Correct. Okay, perfect. We will move on to um, the next item, which, uh, well, we've got to move on. We've got to accept this, right? No, you're going to bring it back. Okay. It says an acceptance, so it threw me off. Okay. Madam Chair? Yeah. May we have a vote to accept the plan? And if any of the comments that we receive um, can be incorporated, we will, um, okay. so that we don't bring it back for final approval. Okay. Is that okay? Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So is there a motion to approve this item? So moved. Moved second. by Ben. Is there a second? Tim. Second. Sorry. Second by Tim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nay? Passes. Okay. Next, we have the item number 11, which is approving the fiscal year 2024-25 final operations budget. Um, this is a public hearing. So at this time, I will open the public hearing and turn it over to the executive director. Yes, at this time, I'll present the final budget. And then if there's any comments, um, we can hear those. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is the fiscal year 24-25 final operations budget um, on page 160 in the um, Excel chart. Um, I've identified the changes from the draft, which was approved in March. Um, the total increase is 10787 This is um, attributed to increases um, to salary and benefits. Um, as many of you know, um, the COG hasn't been um, um, to the full four FTEs uh, over the last two years, um, but we are finally back to four full-time equivalent employees, and this increase um, accounts for that. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, none. Yeah. Any questions from the board? Just making sure no. Are there any public comment on this? Oh, there's none in the room. Any online? No. None online? Okay. Um, seeing that there's no public comment and no comment by the board, um, I will close the public hearing. And then are you bringing this back? No. Okay. I need it. So then... Um, there is a motion to approve this item. So moved. moved by Tim. Is there a second? Second. Second by Justin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nay? Patches. Okay, next is item number 12, approving resolutions identifying the reserve balances for multiple funds. I will turn it back over to the executive director. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Many of you may remember um, through the presentation with Richardson and Company um, that he had requested staff bring back um, as part of the annual budget process um, resolutions identifying specific re reserves. We currently have three. One of them is our general fund, which is our OWP fund. We have our LTF where that reserve is held within the re, uh, LTF um, fund. And then we have our RSTP reserve. Um, what has happened over many years is the board approves allocations annually. And so when he's conducting the audit, he can have 15 different resolutions adding up 
up to $132,000, you know, five identifying 160. So his recommendation in the audit is that annually I bring back a clean resolution identifying the total amount of the reserves. Um, and then that's what is submitted for the audit. So we don't have to track multiple resolutions. So as I've um, attached, there's three separate um, resolutions. No reserves that you have previously approved have been changed. So these are reserve amounts have been the same over the last year. So our general fund or our overall work program fund has 303,906. Um, in my staff report, I detail how that was um, set up, the methodology and the reasoning. Um, the next reserve is the LTF fund, and that fund is held within the LTF um, fund and is identified on the general ledger summary page that we turn in um, for our financial reports. And that totals 161,807. And then the last one is our RSTP fund. This fund or reserve was set up many, many years ago. Um, we haven't added to it. The balance is 132, um, 647. Um, and I don't see a need for us to add to it or increase it. I think through our call for projects, you know, this is before we used to do a call for projects for city and county. And so we would put this funding aside for a reserve in case they had project overruns. Um, so I don't see uh, a need to do that any longer. If the council has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Justin? Um, while these funds are sitting, do they collect interest on anything? Yes, so that's why we hold them within the fund. And so when you look at the balance sheet during our mid-year, you'll see the balance of the fund and say it's 900,000. But within that, 300,000 is a reserve. So your actual balance is only 600,000. And how the methodology for the OWP reserve was set up is, you know, I think 60% of COG's operations budget is reimburse, you know, grant funds. So we would run into cash flow issues. So we took the methodology of identifying, identifying three months of operating accounts payable, and we came up with that amount, and that is the reserve amount for our OWP operating fund. And that come in handy when the federal government has not yes. repaid our invoices on time. We'll get to that <laughs> item in CTA. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> and any other questions? And then any public comment? And none, any, and, and shaking her head no online. Um, so with that, I'll bring it back to the board. If everyone is satisfied, is there a motion to approve the 2024-25 OWP? Um, I'm sorry, I moved at the wrong one. Approving the resolution to identifying the reserve balances for all three funds. So moved. Moved Second. by Justin. Second. Second by Tim. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Any names? Okay, thank you. Now we can go to item number 13. Okay, resolution number fiscal year 24-29, approving the fiscal year 24-25 OWP, uh, OWPA and planning, programming, and monitoring and um, expenditure plan. I will turn it back over to the executive director. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I've, I have a handout that I've given to the chair of the overall work program chart, but if you wanna look in your packet, it's on page 189. Um, changes from the draft, um, this final totals 1.6 million. Um, it's an increase of approximately 63,000. Um, of that 57.5 at the top of the chart under rural planning assistance, that has been identified for carryover. Um, the only new work element is work element number 17. That's the Angels Camp um, Main Street plan update. 
Um, COG completed the original plan in 2015. Um, the city has reached out to us. They want to update the plan. They want to do um, additional improvements downtown and also um, use the plan to apply for funding. Um, after year end, many of you know this, these are estimates. Um, we are gonna close year end, reconcile all the projects. We'll bring back to you um, the overall work program amendment number one that will reflect actuals and actual project carryover. If the council has any questions, um, we also received comments from Caltrans and staff has included and incorporated uh, those comments into the final overall work program. Any questions from the board? Seeing none, any public comment? None in the none. room, none online. Bring it back to the board. If everyone is happy with what they're seeing, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Pat, is there a second? Second. Second by Justin, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nay? Because she and none, we move on to the next agenda item. Um, that is item number 14, which is the minute order approving the Federal Highway Improvement Program funding to the City of Angels uh, Murphy's Grade Project. Um, I'll turn it over to the Executive Director. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this item um, was a request from the City of Angels um, through multiple calls for projects. Um, the Murphy's Grade Road Project was awarded uh, this highway infrastructure funding or HIP funding. Um, they had a three-year um, allocation, um, and then there was, they continued it for one more year. Um, so if you look on page 225, I've given a breakdown of the three years that were already previously awarded or programmed for the City of Angels. And the City of Angels is asking for the last year of 2020-21 that um, totals $39,317. Uh, These are the remaining balance of the HIP funds. Um, and so... The city's project has already been federalized. It's already received these HIP funding or HIP funds in the past. Um, so I would recommend to the council that we program these towards the city's project. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does that wrap up the project? Yes, that's the update. No, I just wanted to say if they, yes, if we had to. If we could celebrate or if it was another. Let's take a couple more months. <laughs> yeah. I have this So, with that, is there any questions from the board on this item? Seeing none, is there any public comment? Seeing none in the room, any no. online? Yeah, hey, you'll bring it back to the board. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Tim. Is there a second? Second. Second by Justin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nay? <laughs> Patsy. <laughs> hey, we move on to the next is council report. So I will start with Tim. I have nothing to report. Justin. Nothing to report. Isabel? Nothing to report. Pat? Quiet on the list. <laughs> ben? Good, 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 good. <laughs> you don't have anything in? No? <clears throat> okay. um, we appointed two new planning commissioners, uh, John, um, I, yeah, and Daniel Whitford to the planning commission last night. Who was the first one? John um, Oder. He, yeah. he didn't retire. He did not retire. <laughs> he came back. No, good for him. He just started to retire every year. <laughs> and then we did have the groundbreaking yesterday that Isabel mentioned uh, for you to compare. Um, the only thing I have to report is Tim and I um, attended the executive management meeting. Um, was that last week? Um, with the executive director, city administrator, and county CEO. And um, everything you see in front of you today is what we discussed. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, okay, next is staff report. Uh, I will start with the executive director. Thank you. 
Um, I'm sure everyone is aware and has heard some version of um, what is going on with California and the deficit. Um, we have been participating in our CaliCog forums and listening for any updates. Um, you know, ATP is being uh, cut a certain portion, so it's going to get very competitive. Um, we are currently submitting an application uh, for the ATP Cycle 7 um, for our Copperopolis connectivity and safe routes to school, and that is going to be submitted on 17th. Uh, June 17th. Um, but we're, we're watching um, and we're listening because one of the funding sources that we were really worried about is the SB 125 funding. You know, we've all been talking about our new transit facility and the state funding that had been allocated for transit capital projects. Um, so it hasn't been cut. Um, it's been frozen. Um, so we are waiting to hear. I will keep the council updated as soon as I know something. Um, that won't detour us. I think we should finish our design phase. That will give us two years to go through grant applications of federal funds. Um, so I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep the council posted on the funding front. Thank you. Any questions for her? Yeah. Is, are any of those frozen funds going to impact Wagonford? Not right now. All of all the current funding for the project has been programmed, and the county has gone out and allocated it. So that is, you know, available to them uh, to to invoice. It does make it hard to go after additional funding, um, but I think in Robert's update. Um, the board approved that change order, which thank you council, you know, for um, allocating that additional 2.2 in RSTP so that that gave the county the availability to use that RIM funding. But I am still tasked with finding funding. That is our number one regional project um, and it has regional significance. So I will keep looking anywhere we can for additional funding. Yeah, it's it's never off of our mind. As I know it's not off of your mind. But <laughs> yes, yes, no, it's definitely needed. You know, the county has been carrying a very heavy load and I know it's on their minds. So as their partner, we will keep pounding the pavement. I'll turn on my mic for you, Susan, and I appreciate the work you've all done to, towards those ends. It's really helped out significantly. Thank you. Yeah, anything else? Oh, uh, thank you for that. I didn't ask to. Um, Ann, no? Okay. Ann? No. Um, I included in the packet my standing kind of transportation planning report. I did want to update that on the electric vehicle charging infrastructure implementation plan. We've actually successfully scheduled the site visits for um, mid-June, so I'm super excited about that to get that project um, continuing to move forward. The consultant will be out to the city um, designated sites and the county sites to kind of do a deeper analysis of what electric needs there will be and how to kind of better situate where the charging stations could go. So that's exciting. And then on the active transportation recreational trails plan, um, I did state it, but I, I just wanted to throw out there, we did have, um, we do a table or a booth for the transit there, but we kind of split it this time. And so it was half ATRTP and half transit. Um, and it was, I thought it was really, really, this fair was a little bit slower this year. Um, than like the prior year or so, but I thought it was really good um, foot traffic for us. We gathered uh, contact information from 65 people throughout the county just to have their eyes on this project and passed out, of course, more information. Um, and that was like the very first kind of reach out. We don't even have like a ton of stuff happening yet. Like the project website just went up, um, but we are scheduling our workshops and pop-ups for late June and early July. So you'll see those in Valley Springs, Angels Camp, and I'm thinking Mountain Ranch. Um, so I just want to share that. Very exciting. Betty? 
have a phone here. Sure. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're going to be very jealous and you I actually said know. something. <laughs> you never read the report. Okay, um, we will join the COG and we will go into the CTA. Before we go into the CTA, if anyone need a break, are we good? Good? Okay. Move on to the CTA. Um, we will go directly into consent agenda. So there are multiple, multiple items on the consent. Is there any board member that wishes to pull an item off consent? Seeing none, are there any in the public comments in the room? Seeing none and shaking their head, none, none online. I'll bring it back to the board. Is there any, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Moved. Moved by Tim. Is there a second? Second. Oh, I, I just like to abstain from number two. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, on the minutes. Okay. Um, so we'll pull, why don't we do this? We'll pull number two, do that separate, and then three through eight will go for a motion. So do you want to amend that? Okay. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Pat. All in favor? Aye. Uh, consent agenda number, and any name? Okay, that passage in. And then next is consent agenda item number two, which is the meeting minutes from April 3rd. Um, is there a motion for that? So moved. moved by Tim. Is there a second? Second. Second by Pat. All in favor? Uh, Aye. So that's one. Any nay? And then it abstains. Oh, okay. Two abstains. Now my number. One, two, three, four, five, zero, two. Yeah. Did I do that right? Okay. Um, okay. Moving on is public comment. Are there any public comments for any items not on the agenda for CTA? See none in the room, any none online. none online. We'll move on to item number 10, which is the minute order approving the fiscal year 23-24 operations budget amendment number three. I'll turn it over to executive director. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this item is our fiscal year 23-24 amendment number three. Um, this um, budget totals $2,061,313. Um, of that, 1.7 is operating expenses and 289,000 are capital expenditures. Um, the increase of 127 is primarily due to the dial-a-ride service um, and fuel costs for this year. Um, you know, we mentioned in the audit um, that we, the COG enacted the dial-a-ride during an emergency response during COVID. Um, with federal funding um, that was awarded to transit agencies to keep services going, we thought this was the perfect uh, scenario to bring the dial-a-ride service into our official uh, routes and services. It's been very popular. Um, so if you, if you um, look on page 35 in the chart, we were able to cover, um, dial-a-ride usually um, costs like 170, 170,000 a year. And so if you look in the revenue portion um, under the federal funds 4506, that 210 of federal dollars is covering that dial-a-ride service for us. Um, and in the past, we've never been able to try it because it costs so much money and we don't wanna use local funds. So um, it's been amazing to use these federal funds for the service. It's very popular. Um, everybody has been using it. Um, during the one thing that we have never done um, that I wanted to highlight was, I think some of you remember during our annual TDA audit, we talked about LTF funds and claiming those and come and it was recommended to come back and take out capital expenditures that are not gonna happen before the end of the fiscal year, which we are doing. And we are gonna receive another electric van and a new bus 
by the end of June. Um, so the other three buses will be included in the final budget, which will be the next item. Um, I was trying to prove a point here, sorry. Oh, the fund balance. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> so we've never utilized or spent down fund balance. So when we were going through the audit, we talked about LTF. He was saying, you need to bring back a line item. So we are going to spend down fund balance. In the staff report, we've broken down what our current fund balance is, what our outstanding revenue is, and our anticipated expenditures. Um, I think we're looking at a balance of 1.1. So we're... Re requesting that in this amendment three, um, spending 333,000 of fund balance. If the council has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Anyone have any questions, Ben? I'm not sure if it goes in with this specifically, but you know, it, with the new, new bus added to the current ones and everything else, and with the current situation with CUSD and I believe one of the board members reached out to you at one point. Yes. Are we looking at working to help students in the Valley Springs area? Um, I'm supposed to meet with Sherry Roosh. So what has happened, and, and this piggybacks on to what is happening with Common Grounds um, and them shutting down and the senior population also, you know, not being able to use the silver streak. Um, just to catch you up, the council or CTA has not been able to receive new vehicles for over four years. Um, we got caught in a queue um, and we had to cancel buses to reorder them again. So we have vehicles that are past their useful life and have upwards of over 400,000 miles on them. So our system, I'm worried about keeping our own services, um, but what you're talking about with the high school, if they could find a way to use the um, the red the red, red line. line, yes, um, which is right through Angels um, and San Andreas and Valley Springs, mm -hmm. if they need to go up country because we still have our dial a ride, we could look at scheduling something. But I haven't been able to nail that down with our operator. I, I, yeah, I th I think that. What you just said is what their thought process is because those were the only buses up country that they didn't cancel. Yes, yes. But it can't be a designated. Like the kids, you know, have to find the bus stop and use the, the normal system. I can't do specific or charter, you know, right. then I'll be out of compliance with federal funding. So Thank you. No, that's yep. the stuff in the direction. Yes. I have an additional question. So similar to how we um, coordinate with Columbia College, yes, can we do that with the schools if that end up? It, mm -hmm. Do the funds allow for that same opportunity? So um, Columbia or College, you can look into it. I just yeah. Um, let, let me look into it. Columbia College is a little different. They're adults, um, and Columbia College um, buys uh, a it. certain amount of tickets a year so that all of their students are free. Um, so when they pre buy, you know, tickets for their students, um, I think we can make something happen. It just can't be, you know, right. changing the schedule. It's just patching up. Right. So, and it's a big hole void to fill and you don't necessarily have everything ready, uh, but ridership numbers could go up with that, which would be beneficial. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Um, with that, um, if there's no other questions, we go public comment. Seeing none in the room, none online. Not mine. We'll bring it back to the board. Is there a motion to approve um, this agenda item? Board. Moved by Kim. Second. Second by Pat. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Okay. Thank you. Are now, we're now on item number 11, which is minute order approving the 24-25 final operations budget. And this is a public hearing. 
So I will officially open the public hearing and turn it over to the executive director. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is the fiscal year 24-25 final operations budget. Uh, changes from the draft that the council approved in March, um, total 38,000. Um, we have moved around some funding and I did wanna um, point out um, we're using and increased our federal funds by 140,000. Um, this is the ARPA and CRISA funding um, that we are, were awarded after COVID. We're drawing those funds down. Um, those are gonna cover the costs of the increase to line item 5272 and line item 5301. Um, again, we are increasing and will probably be increasing operations throughout the year because of dial a ride. It's so popular as we see it tracking, we come back and we amend the budget. Um, COG staff, staff time increased. Usually we allocate around 60,000, um, but with the work on the new transit facility um, RFP design, um, we've increased that line item. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there any questions from the board? Um, I have a question. On the software, is that to streamline all the information that was in the audit to collect it into one to, that was mentioned in the audit as recommendation. Yep. So, so it's not multiple systems. You're you're remembering what we discussed at executive management. Until that happened, so I moved. If you look at line item um, fifty seven zero four, that has a decrease, but we moved the subscription up to fifty two zero zero. But with that audit finding, um, what the chair is pointing out, um, and then how one of the recommendations to track deadhead hours and tracking uh, rides specifically to, um, uh, to fares, we currently use two software systems? Correct. Two different software systems. We're looking to find a software system that will do, you know, because we run a software system to get one answer. We run the other software system to get another answer. We need, now we've outgrown these, we need a more um, complex one that will cover these for us. And hopefully we'll be bringing that back and, you know, that will be, you know, we'll check off one of the recommendations in the audit. Thank you. Is there any other questions? No? Okay. Is there any public comment? Men in the room, men online, and shaking our heads. Okay, so bring it back. I will, seeing there's no public comment, I will close the public hearing. And um, is there a motion to approve um, agenda item number 11? So moved. Moved by Ben. Is there a second? Second. Second by Justin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Okay, passage. Um, Thank you. I don't see Cynthia here, so we're gonna skip that. Okay, okay so since um, Cynthia's not here for number 12, we'll move on to staff report. I'll start with Anne. Anne, do you have anything? I don't think I have anything to add at this time. Okay, Anne? <laughs> Melissa? No, nothing further. Okay. Um, and with that, we will adjourn and remember we do not have a COG or CTA meeting in July. We will be back here August 7th in this room at 530 for both. Four